Hi everybody, welcome back to another truck camper video. We still got this 1980 something Gramby. Now we need a truck to put it on. What's unique about these Grambys is two things. One, they're very long, eight foot bed. Now an eight foot bed's kind of common, right? There's plenty of trucks that still have an eight foot bed today. But the other thing about this Gramby, this dimension right here is what's really important when considering mounting this Gramby on a truck. It's a four foot wide, right? Like, like old pieces of plywood, but there's not a lot of trucks today that can handle that four foot width between the wheel well. The other things that you need to consider is the height over the cab, and then also the distance between the bed rails. All of that means that these campers fit a very specific type of truck. Once I had this camper, and even though it's not fixed up yet, we we're on the hunt for a truck that would work. And good news is we have one. And this is the truck that couldn't be better for pulling that camper around. This is a 1986 F-150 and it's so great for everything that we need to do today. So I've been shopping for a truck for that camper since I got that camper, really. Originally, I was really thinking an F-250 or an F-350 would be even better, like a diesel. Those are really hard to come by. Even these old F-150s are a little hard to come by. This is a seventh gen, so they made these from 80 to 86, I believe. This is an 86 last year. The eighth gen would have even worked as well, but after getting this, I'm so happy with it. I bet you it's an 86. I bet you that camper was an 86 too. They are a match made in heaven. And this bed is the number one reason we needed this truck. Eight foot long and four foot wide between the wheel wells and then whatever it is between the the bed rails i don't really remember this is the exact right size bed for these old grambies if you don't have a very old truck to fit them you end up having to change the floor pack which some people like to do do shorten really nicely you get a longer cab over people definitely do that all the time but i didn't want to take on that type of project and so this is perfect for what we're doing today i call this truck the patina monster before i tell you any more about it why don't we jump in and go for a spin and we'll talk a little bit more about this truck because it's awesome so far i honestly i'm falling in love with the truck a little bit more than the camper even it runs great i think it's lowish miles let's jump in and go for a ride starts like a dream let's go so this is my new truck found it on craigslist there was two pictures of it on craigslist uh, which showed it very beat up and very neglected. When I took it for a test drive, it had flat tire. Uh, it was filthy on the inside, like absolutely filthy. They were looking for like 3,000 bucks for it. I are from two. I took it home for $2,100. So not bad for an old pickup truck. Let's talk about what it's got and what it doesn't have. So it has the old six cylinder engine actually that's i guess it's called straight six or the truck six you know i don't know an awful lot about domestic cars honestly i don't know an awful lot about cars in general but it's a 300 cubic inch six cylinder it's 4.9 liters and apparently it's it's pretty well known as being like super reliable they made this engine for like a century essentially it's been around forever so it's got that engine in it and that's pretty cool i think i think it means it's going to be reliable but well, an engine's only as reliable as it is maintained and how many miles it has on it so mileage these old things only have only have five digit odometers this one's currently sitting at ninety-eight thousand. the person i bought it from was apparently the second owner they seem to think it really did only have 98,000 miles. I explained to them, I was like, it could have rolled over. It could be 198, 298, more and more. And one, they didn't really get it. They weren't really into trucks. I don't know why they had it. Two, they were like, no, it only has 98,000. So I'm not sure the mileage. What I will say is it starts on first go every time. The transmission feels really tidy for an old truck. And I don't know, maybe it really does only have 98,000 miles on it. But that'd be pretty crazy. Very low mileage, 86 if, it, if that was the case. I don't know what to do with that information. But she's driving down the road nice today. Look at this view. So this is one of my most favorite things about the truck, the transmission. It's like a T18 or T19, something like that. I don't really know much about old trucks, like I've said already. But it's manual, four on the floor. So four speeds, first gear is an absolute granny gear. But then what's even better is we have this transfer case. And when it's in four low, 
my goodness does it crawl it's so cool like you can go maximum like two miles an hour or something like that i'm in four low check it out that's first gear in four low it's so cool it's such a crawler love this car the transmission's quite tidy. It makes me think that uh, it's actually in pretty good shape. Four speed on the floor is awesome with the locking hubs out front. And we even have the locking hubs right here. Woo! Which is super cool. Speaking of up here, I put new tires on it too. Well, new used tires. I think these are really common for like certain Jeeps. So I was able to pick some up that were used and got somebody to mount them for, I don't know, hundred bucks or something like that. So we put some new meats all the way around to fix this thing up more. Hey, while we're over here, let's talk more about the bodywork. When I bought this, this entire side was all beat in. You can still see we're dented up, but I guess the word on the street is that it was hit by a snowplow. Not so great, maybe that's why it was priced the way it was. But this thing was all banged in. This was like pushed into Timbuktu. I literally had to like get on it and like wrench on it. There was a huge gap in the door. So the body was pretty rough when I got it, but I banged it all out in a matter of just like a few hours too. The good thing about an old truck like this, like a two by four is all you need. Um, so we banged it all out, got it in decent shape, and even replaced the mirrors because those were all cracked because one came broken and I broke the other because every time I have to go through the side of my house, I put them in and I broke one doing that. But new mirrors, good, safety first, really good. But the big one was increase the functionality and that's this window. So that was something fun I learned how to do is fix a uh, cranked window that's got that, that thing there with that whole mechanism. I got this whole thing off, glued it all back together and got the window working again. It has these awesome front wedge windows too, which are actually really nice for when you're cruising down the road. But that was one more thing that I did was fix up this window. Fixed the tailgate too. When I got it, the uh, tailgate lack, latch mechanism was all messed up. It didn't work at all. You know, I really didn't need to since the tailgate's gonna come off for the camper. I like to fix things, learn how it is. I didn't know how an 80s truck tailgate worked. Now I do. So we got that all fixed up as well. Let's go into the cab. So I know the cab doesn't look like much right now, but when I got it, it was way worse. It was completely covered in dirt and mud. I had to just scrub everything out. It was disgusting, just full of garbage and garbage and garbage. So we cleaned and we cleaned and we cleaned. We took all the garbage out. It came with a farm jack, like a high lift jack. So that's fun, I have one of those now. Got everything in, you know, decent shape. Definitely the biggest letdown is that the cassette player does not work. I've tried to get it to work and I'm giving up on that one. Other things I did, boom, new keys. When I got it, the um, keys for the door didn't work at all. So I got those all keyed up. We got the windshield wipers. We put new windshield wiper blades on and I think, yeah, the spray even works. So we got good old fashioned windshield wipers working here. I had to put a new knob on it and everything. Other things I worked on was the turn signals. When I got it, some of the turn signals were gone. Uh, so I had to get those fixed, but then I even had to replace like the little turn signal module. So again, I'm all about learning new things. I didn't have a clue that there used to be like these turn signal modules that plugged right in the fuse block. And um, now I know how that works. So that was one more cool thing to learn how to use. And the last thing I did was actually I cleaned this thing really well. And then I linseeded, linseed oiled the entire outside. It looked really cool. Like I said, this thing is a patina monster. So there you have it. That's the uh, 1986 F-150. It's been a great little truck so far. I've put uh, 280 miles on it since I got it. Filled up the dual tanks like once, maybe twice. And drove it around town, running errands with it. It drives great. It like is super fun to drive. I get comments about it all the time. And from one side, it actually looks okay. From the snowplow side, eh, it's got a little to be desired, but really happy with it. I don't plan on doing much else to the truck. If there's other things that you think I should do because you know more about these and they're ticking time bombs, let me know. But it starts every time I get in it. We'll see how it handles the big camper. Maybe we'll install leaf spring upgrades after we put the camper on it. But that's the truck. I'm hoping not to do much else. And I'm hoping after this video, we get back to camper stuff. So thanks for tuning in. There's the camper right back there. Next video, we'll, we'll try to get that thing cleaned out and get the roof uh, going up and down. So see you next time.